Hello everybody and welcome back. I am KRX and we're going to be taking a look at Foundation, which is a village builder in early access on Steam right now. It's been in early access for about two and a half years and it's gotten many updates. This is going to be up to date gameplay for 2021. Um, and uh, recently there was a UI update actually that made the game basically playable now. Um, over two years after its initial release. Now, now, to be fair, I've played it at its initial release, and I've played it multiple times. I've revisited it over the years, and uh, the game has always been playable, but the UI is much, much better now, and much more inviting now, I suspect, uh, for newer players. So this would be uh, this would be a time that if someone was really looking at the game and, and wanting to get it, this, uh, things are getting into a good state. Now, hopefully there will continue to be a lot of additional content and updates as we go forward. Um, the development is rather slow for this game so far, but um, I don't know. It's it, everything that they're adding seems to be uh, good. Seems to be uh, moving in the right direction at least. Just no idea when this game's actually going to become released. No idea when it's going to be finished. No idea of really what they're working on or what's going to be coming into the game in the future. Um, this is going to be a tutorial. Let's click on new game here. So this is going to be a tutorial on getting going in the map and. Uh, or getting going in the village and successfully building a, a village that has, you know, a, an equilibrium, a successful equilibrium, and is able to progress into, uh, you know, the end parts of the game. Um, so we have these five maps here. There are actually maps that you can download on the workshop now, which is nice. And I believe you can. There, there's ways to get tools to do the map editing. I don't know if that's uh, explicitly in, like, built in game yet. Um, but there are ways that people are making new maps and stuff, and you can take advantage of this on the workshop, which is pretty cool. Um, Hills is actually one of the maps that doesn't have any water on it, so if we do want to have a full variety of, of stuff, we should probably pick one. You know what, let's actually do the, um, the, the river map here. Which actually, that just looks really, really nice right there. And again, there are a bunch of mods on the workshop. I don't think that's an excuse not to continually improve the game and uh, add content to the core game itself. Uh, but that there is a, a fairly impressive modding community around this game, even in its early access state um, currently. So we're gonna we're gonna not worry about this too much as as I'll kind of be explaining things as we go here. Um, at the beginning of the map, we can sort of look around and and see what we're what we're dealing with here. And uh, we can pick a one of these. He it's giving us the option of these three, or is there more than three? Oh, there's a few more than three. There's a number of these that we can pick and start off in any of these different hexes. Um, huh. Now, the only thing I'm thinking is if we actually built out here, we would be rather restricted. One, a lot of this land here is actually the river. We're not going to be able to build on the river. And to build off of the river, like additional hexes, once we start in a hex, that's our starting point. And then additional hexes that we purchase will go off of there. And eventually, if you had the money and if you built the economy that could support the sort of the taxes you and the maintenance costs, you could, you could, you know, your, your city really has no limit except for the, the size of the map. Um, in fact, actually over here, it looks like this will be some areas where there will actually be some mining opportunities and stuff and some over here as well. So it'll be interesting to see which direction we actually go off into. I'm actually kind of thinking about getting this one because it's mostly land, a little bit of water. Um, Bridges are rather expensive to build, actually, in this game. So, so even building bridges across this area would be a little bit of an obstacle. So, it's not going to be something we're going to want to do super early on. Here we have we have stone, and we have berries. That's one of the things you're looking for. And you'll see that any of these opening hexes will have both stone and berries. That's how it's set up. Stone berries, um, stone berries, stone berries, so on and so forth. So that's how it's setting up the hexes and and what's what we're able to do. We're just going to pick this one here. No big deal. Now we have our hex. Time to build the village center, and that's going to sort of kick everything off and get everything else unlocked for us to be able to uh, keep going. Maybe the village center could could be sort of over here more. Well, that's a stone area. Hmm. And, and leading into this peninsula here. Probably gonna end up chopping some of these trees down. Let's let's build this. Let's build it in here. We're in the forest right there, which is a little bit goofy, but we'll clear that out soon enough, I'm sure. Okay, and let's actually pause the game while we just look at things for a little bit. So we have the village center, <laughs> and we have some people just hanging out at the village center because these people don't have homes, but we've just sort of magically uh, been given, you know, eight population and some starting resources. 
and naturally we're going to have to, you know, uh, create ways to uh, start building these resources on our own as we can see that uh, a lot of the buildings require. Um, in fact, actually, to be honest, it's not even going to let us really build. It's not going to let us mess up here. It's, it's going to force us to build a builder's workshop. And this, this is the building that will let us continue to build additional buildings. In fact, I, you know, we'll just... Um, one of the really cool things about this game, though, is it's sort of completely gridless, as you'll notice. We can build this building any way we want. In fact, you know, we can build it kind of hanging off. Actually, it doesn't really like being next to the water. Some buildings, you can kind of hang them off the water if you want. Um, but for the most part, we can build this. In fact, we can even build this like on top of our village center if we wanted to. Like there's really, there's no anarchy. There's no grids. You can build however you want. This is just a builder's hut. We just get this down and that lets us uh, employ builders. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to throw this here. Five, uh, five wood is all it's going to cost us. We have plenty of wood, but we need to make sure that we get more wood so that we can, you know, we're going to assign a uh, couple builders, a couple builders. Of course, we have eight people that can be employed. Two builders will probably be enough for a small village. Now that we've built the building hut, it's going to let us build some more stuff. It probably is going to recommend. Oh, it's not actually really recommending. Maybe we have to unpause the game for it to, to give us a new little little quest here. But either way, we're going to want to get more uh, lumber, right? We're going to want to get more wood. So let's build that. That's going to cost us some tools. Again, we got to kind of keep an eye on on uh, what we're building at the beginning as there is a finite amount of uh, these initial resources. So if we're going to try to actually take advantage of these berries over here and start getting us because because our people are going to need to eat. And that's going to be one of the ways that we can actually make money as the lord in this area. Um, So we're looking for, where's the food production? There it is. Okay, here we go. Gathering hut. People are also going to want a well just so they can drink water. So we're going to build the gathering hut right here. That's only going to cost us, uh, it's going to cost us a little bit of gold, but it's going to cost us um, 10 more wood. Again, we can, we're making wood at this point, right? At this point, this building is built. We're going to be able to employ woodcutters there and we'll make wood. So wood is now something that we have sort of taken care of. Stone is something that we're going to want for sure. We have no stone right now, but some of the buildings that we want to build are going to need stone. So let's just put that next to here. Now, there is one thing we need to do with this gathering hut. In order to tell the villagers when they work here that they're gathering from here, or, you know, just telling them, we actually go to this paint thing. So there's the build tab, which has all the buildings, and there's the paint tab. Again, this game has no grids, right? It's, it's relatively uh, organic in that nature. Um, we can we have to actually mark this area for extraction. So tell them, hey, go extract that area. Now it turns out that the stone and the berries last forever. These nodes will not disappear. Um, that might change in the future or something like that. I'm not sure. So that's why presumably you tell the, the gatherers where they go and gather. It doesn't just automatically detect that there's a berry patch here, which probably for stone and berries would probably be fine. It would probably be fine. But for wood cutting, it's actually kind of a big deal. So with wood cutting, we can actually go in and specifically say, hey, come cut this wood that's around this, the town square. But don't cut this wood over here. And we can actually sort of like, we can actually sort of paint in the trees and sort of get the, um, the workers to cut specific trees and keep certain trees standing for aesthetic reasons this game is it is a village builder it does require you know uh balancing out you know food and clothing and and stuff like that for your villagers and and the the economy of you as the lord having to sort of tax your villagers and, and be able to maintain the buildings and stuff pay for the maintenance of the things that you build and to expand the uh, the king you know sort of not the kingdom but the the lordship i guess and 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 be able to pay the actual king who owns all this land um, to, to rent additional space to expand the village and stuff. So there is there is a management to it. But a lot of this game is purely um, just the aesthetics. In fact, actually, we could go up to three builders right now, probably. Three three builders assigned while we're um, while we're working on mostly just building things. Oh, uh, yep, we're just waiting on builders. 
So this game is mostly you'll you'll notice that it's 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 more geared towards building a village that you're aesthetically proud of, more so than than like trying to like figure out the puzzle of the game. The, the puzzle of the game is rather shallow and pretty basic, although I will say that you can get trapped very easily with it. It's not completely forgiving. Um, and I think this is something they're probably going to be tuning as, as you know, there's probably going to be a sandbox mode eventually and stuff. But the, the money system in the game, I think, is is kind of more annoying than anything at this point. And it kind of restricts your ability to build things because things can start to cost so much money that it's hard to generate that money. And it's more, instead of it being like a, like a survival game like Banished, it's more of just like a, a money manager thing. Um, and, and really the only way that you can lose money is if you build beautiful things that you want to build and you gain money by just repressing, uh, rep repressing your desires, basically. Um, which is why, again, I'm, I'm not a massive fan of how they've set up the money as the core central thing. It's, it's not like resources are just something that you can just get infinitely, essentially. Uh, money is the thing that you can also generate infinitely, but it's possible to be at an equilibrium where you're losing money to the point where you can't recover, where you can get stuck. Um, and it doesn't feel particularly good because it's, again, it's not a very difficult thing. It's just if you get really excited and overambitious about something, all of a sudden your entire village can get, can get sort of taken out by that, by the enthusiasm. Actually, we could probably go up to speed two at this point. What other buildings have we not built? We need the well. People do need water. We want a forester camp so that we can regrow trees, but we also want a sawmill so we can start to get, um, so that we can start, we need a granary to store. Actually, we got a few things we need to do. We got a few things we need to build. We need a granary to store the berries that we're collecting. So again, I can build this granary on top of the gathering hut if I wanted to. In fact, maybe that'll look kind of good, a little bit sort of overlapping there, kind of like fused together. That might actually look kind of cool. So let's try that. So again, there's there's really like, it's total anarchy. You could build this stuff however you want and it'll be functional. How amazing is that? So I think around the village square would be a cool idea to build a uh, market stall. But you know, we're going to wait till this gets cleared out. Can we, can we clear this out, please? Let's get some more workers over here. It's the dealio here. Why aren't we chopping trees? Yeah, come on. Let's chop some trees, guys. Let's let's clear this out. This this place is kind of hard to see down here. And yeah, we're gonna need the uh, the sawmill, which requires stone. We don't have the stone yet. Uh, let's get some people collecting food because you know people are gonna need food. Uh, but most importantly, is the marketplace right now. The marketplace is how we're going to be able to make money. So we pay a maintenance cost at the building, which I guess represents the worker lay, uh, wages to some degree. So we pay worker wages and, and maintain the building. And then and then they go to the market and buy, buy berries to eat. All the citizens go and buy berries with presumably their invisible wages. And then that, that becomes money for you. So it ends up, you end up uh, profiting off of that, which... I'm not sure how that works exactly, right? Because if we were paying them, if we were paying them X amount, and then they go to the market and spend X amount, somehow we generate money out of that. You know what I mean? Somehow, somehow the money goes up um, to higher. You know what I mean? Um, but that's that's essentially how the economy works: is that that you pay a maintenance on the buildings you build. And you pay for the buildings you build, and you pay for a tax on the territory that you have. And then you make money by just selling the stuff that all of your people make. Uh, you, you make money when they go to the marketplace and, and buy the stuff that they make, essentially. So if, if you have a clothing, if you're making clothing, then all of the citizens, not just the ones who make clothing, of course, but all the citizens will then go and purchase clothing. Um, and they always have enough money personally to buy the things they need. So it's not, it's just an issue of whether or not you have the things they need to produce. Here we go. We're starting to clear this area out now, which is nice. Um, let's get a marketplace. Around the city center. 
There's a market stall. Now this is a special kind of building. This is a special kind of building. In fact, let's pause for a second. This is actually technically considered to be a monument. So the game has these monument structures that you can build in more detail. Like we just marked down, we'd like to put one here and we put the food stall here. But you can see we're not done yet. We could just hit build, that's totally fine. This is all we really need to have it be operational. But we could expand it by putting a tent. We can, we can sort of make it look nice. And that, the tent will actually give us uh, splendor, which is actually important for unlocking certain things. The question is, I don't know if we actually have, we do have 10 cloth, so we can afford to put one on top. Oh, that's actually saying it's a little bit too far away here or too near the edge of the map, the edge of our borders there. There we go. So that'll be fine. We can actually go in with some like decorative things at the market. Purely just decorative, but some of this stuff will add, oh no, it used to, it used to add splendor for some of this stuff, but they changed it. That's fine. I actually kind of like that tree right there, to be honest. I'm almost thinking to make it so they don't chop that tree down. You can add some barrels. And, and, and this is very, this is the most primitive, basic um, monument. But a lot of the, this is the system. This is effectively the system on how you build the large structures, like cat, like churches. Uh, I would say castles, but technically there are no castles in the game. There are lords' manors, which are castle-esque. Um, and presumably there will be castles. Presumably there will be more traditional castles in the future, hopefully. Um, but there's monasteries, there's churches, there's taverns, and they can be these, these big mega structures, which are actually really, really, really cool. Okay, you know, I'm noticing a quick issue here. So we try to do a cool thing, right? We try to do a neat thing, and it turns out the game doesn't like, the game doesn't like when we do cool things. So it's asking for refined, it's asking for planks, not just raw wood. We're just going to build just, just basically what we need. Just the marketplace itself. Just the marketplace itself. Um, that's going to build. What we need to do is we need to finish the granary. Oh, we need stone for that. Okay, let's get rid of one of these builders here. We need two builders. Got one person making stone. We've got uh, plenty of people chopping wood. Let's get two people working in the... We'll need one person working in the granary. We'll need at least one person working on the market as well. So we need a couple available people here in a second. We are trying to get the wood right now so we can finish this granary. By wood, I mean stone. And until we actually start selling our berries at market, we are going to continually lose money on our upkeep, right? Some of these buildings have an upkeep cost. Right, so I'm actually kind of curious, which of these, yeah, the, well, the granary is gonna have a large upkeep cost, five per week. Now it's a little bit confusing. This is per week, five per week. This up here is the average daily. So when we add this, it's not gonna actually add, it's gonna add 0 0.7, 0 0.8 um, to the upkeep. And you can see it just rounds there. So it's not really in a very exact number, which is fine. It's the point across. So presumably this might go up by one more. That construction cost, I don't like how it um, it adds like flat costs that you've already paid to the average daily balance because that's not really accurate to say that's part of the average daily balance. That just means that you had liquid cash and you spent some of it in a lump sum. You see what I'm saying? Like it doesn't need to average that out. Like we, we know that we have X amount of money. We choose to afford to buy something. Therefore we purchase it that, that I need really when I'm looking up at this minus 10, that minus 10 looks a lot more terrifying than the minus three that it actually is. The daily change is minus three due to upkeep on the average. The minus seven is something we've already paid for that. We've literally already paid for that. Okay. So the granary is done. We need to go into the granary and set it to store berries. Now, the only way it can get to market is if, if we have a granary. The only way it can get to market is if we have a granary. So now we have the, we're producing at the, um, we're producing berries at the gathering hut. The berries are then getting, you know, transported via the transporter to the granary. And then it's going to be the job of the market stall worker, the market tender, it's going to be their job to go and pick up berries. So stall number one is set to berries. 
this person's job is to go and get the berries from the granary and then sell them to people who need food. And now you can immediately see, well, we've completed a quest again. That's a fixed lump sum that we just earned. That doesn't really deserve to be there. But, but once we get this going, once we are now in an equilibrium, we are making berries and selling berries and we're going to, that's going to be a profit for us with this small village of only eight people, one person making berries, one person selling berries, eight people purchasing berries. That's going to be a profit. So our money's going to go up, up, up here. We do actually need to get a well. Now that we have some stone, people are going to appreciate a well. Maybe it'd be nice if they had one um, sort of in the city, city center area. And at this point, I think we've built effectively every building except for the sawmill and the forester camp. And those we'll want to probably build maybe uh, maybe around and about this, this large forest area. Where we have the, um, and you can actually just, one of the cool things is you can actually just leave the outline there. If you're not ready to pay for this, like to pay the 50 gold and to have this in the build queue, we can just leave the, uh, we can just leave it there as a marker to say, yeah, we want to build this eventually. In fact, in this case, I'm just going to hit that button. It requires uh, planks, so this is going to take a long, uh, not a long time, it's going to take a little bit to, to get to that point. We're going to need to build the sawmill first, start making planks with the excess wood that we have, and then we can tie that back around to building some of these buildings that require planks. In fact, the market, right, we wanted to kind of jazz up the market a little bit, that was requiring planks. Right now, I'm just in the all tab because there's really not that many buildings here. But of course we can, you know, as we, and there will be more stuff. It's, it's, it's kind of weird, actually. It shows that this stuff isn't unlocked yet, but there's actually way more stuff here than just this. Like it, it, it's like there's multiple tiers of like hidden components. There's stuff that isn't even showing up in this list. And then there's stuff that's sort of like on deck, right? So the farm right now, the wheat farm is, is on deck. It's saying if we complete some quests, we'll get this. It's, it's sort of showing you sort of what's coming up next. Um, there is more stuff, uh, there is more stuff here in general, uh, beyond what it's even showing there. I don't, I, again, I don't really know why. I don't think this stuff even needs to be here at all, to be honest, but it's also confusing because it makes you kind of think that like, this is the end of the line and, and it's kind of like, you know, well, maybe when you get this, the next things will appear. But I, I was actually, when I was playing this recently, when we were playing this on the Twitch channel recently, I wasn't really noticing um, any consistency as to what was here that was grayed out and locked and what was here that was like um, not shown like like what should have been in the list that just wasn't shown so I'm not sure exactly what the distinction is there what what determines something to pop up there we're at minus one right now you can see that we're making construction costs see minus 24 because of construction costs that shouldn't be there 10 because of quest, that shouldn't be there. Get that out of my average daily balance. Right now we're making 15 from the market, average daily balance based on weekly sales. And our upkeep is about six per day. So in total, we're making about five ducats a day. So we're making five ducats a day, which is why our money's going up, even though it's saying that we should, we're losing money. See, it doesn't. it's not helpful to say we're losing money when we're actually making money currently. Um, so this that could be that could be radically improved. And then just randomly when the construction costs come down, now all of a sudden we're making tons of money, but nothing's actually changed in the last three seconds. So this should be more stabilized. This should be more stabilized to give more accurate, like at a glance information. You shouldn't have to come up here and like break it down every time. Okay, message from the kingdom. The kingdom recognizes your efforts in establishing your settlement. Nice. So what it's gonna want us to do now is it's going to want us to promote people to the next rank. And we will definitely check this out in the next episode. What we have right here is we have a small village with all of the basic necessities. We're making money. This is a total equilibrium. These people will never ask for clothes. They'll never ask for tools. They'll never ask for luxury resources like wine or beer or anything like that. They are purely satisfied in their current state as serfs. They're, they, don't even need, they don't even need homes. They're perfectly satisfied being homeless, living around the city center, which isn't really that impressive, uh, just a pile of boxes, and and going to the market and buying berries with the money that they earn, you know, doing hard labor, like chopping wood and getting stone. 
So we are in an equilibrium right now. Everything is totally good. Actually, it does look like they actually do. To be fair, it does actually look like they, they do want um, um, church and uh, uh, housing now. It does actually look like they actually wouldn't mind having a house and, and church. Oh, these guys are serfs. Okay, the serfs, I think, are different than... Oh, we have we do have some newcomers and we have some serfs. Okay, it's automatically made eight. Our original eight started as serfs. The newcomers, I believe, do not require... Newcomers do not require housing. It's the serfs that are complaining. Yeah, newcomers don't require housing. So all future people that come to our village do not expect housing and do not expect church. But because the original eight people we started with are technically serfs, they do require. Now, it is actually telling us that it wants us to promote newcomers to be serfs so that more people require church and housing. And for the most part, that's not... Um, you know, why would we want more people to have church and housing? That's not that great, that step, but you have to get them to be serfs in order to get them to be citizens. And once they're, um, once they're citizens, then they'll actually start buying clothing. And that's a big source of income to sell clothing to them and stuff like that. So you do eventually need to kind of get them leveled up. So they start demanding more things, which is actually oddly enough, an economic opportunity to provide more to them in the way that this sort of, you know, a silly make-believe imaginary economy is set up. Um, but either way, even with 60% happiness, totally fine. Everybody's mostly net positive on happiness. We can just hang out here, and this city will just continue to flourish in its current state. So we've built an equilibrium, and it's just a matter of just dipping our toes into the next sort of phase, you know, tier two stuff, and, and as we continue to advance and progress. So thanks, everybody, for being here. Uh, we will be back in the next episode. There will be a playlist link down below so you can find episode two. Sometimes YouTube's a little bit weird about that. Uh, going from one episode to the other. Sometimes it skips episodes on the recommended uh, rec recommended um, autoplay. So that usually doesn't work out so well. Playlist link will get you going in the right order, all the, all the episodes. Guys, please ask questions and comments in the uh, comment section. I, I read all of those. I, I respond and read all of the comments and questions um, that appear down there. Thanks everybody for being here, guys. I will see you guys in the next episode where we will continue to expand on this village and, and keep talking through and just discussing foundation.